Good morning students. So today I am going to continue the same chapter that is children and women in schools. Under this there are two topics are left that is special consideration like menarche and menstruation dysfunction. And the second one is female athlete trait. So come to the next first topic that is special consideration like menarche and menstruation dysfunction. In this we all are aware of that the physically physically of physicality of man and woman is totally different so women have to go through some natural process on a monthly basis which affect their performance in sports so come to the first is that is menarche under this special consideration that is menarche menarche means it is the beginning of adolescence girls experience menstrual periods the menstrual periods usually begins at the age of 12 to 16 years the beginning of menstrual bleeding is called menarche. The beginning of the menstrual cycle depends on the lifestyle and genetic conditions. And the beginning of youth also causes growth of the reproductive organs and breast among girls. Now come to the menstrual cycle. The, mo the monthly process of bleeding through vagina is called menstrual cycle. The, reprodu the reproductive organs being begin uh, ovulation and produces eggs in the ovaries the egg the egg uh, then moves the egg then moves uh, to the uterus and if if not fertilized it bursts and flows out in the form of the blood through the vagina this causes the monthly periods now come to the menstrual disorder menstrual disorder is caused when the periods are irregular this may be reflected through absence of periods abdominal cramps, heavy or prolonged periods, delay in first monthly periods. Now come to the next under this special consideration that is menstrual dysfunction. Menstrual dysfunction is also called as menstrual, menstrual irregularity. In this we usually the menstrual cycle is a process that takes place over a period of 21 to 35 days. Out of which on 2 or 5 days, 2 to 5 days bleeding is experienced. If the monthly periods do not occur within the period of 21 to 25 days, it is referred to as menstrual dysfunction or menstrual irregularity. If the bleeding, if the bleeding does not happen irregularly or in the right quantity, the health of the woman is adversely affected. Now come to the participation of sports, participation in sports and menstruation period. Earlier, we can say that or we can believe that that uh, uh, during menstruation periods women should not do any physical activity during the menstruation time but participating in activities like sports could have negative effect on the health but this is only a might recent studies nowadays recent studies have pro proved that the menstrual periods are not affected by the participation in games and sports in fact regular participation in fact regular participation in games and sports can help relieve pain and also regularize the menstrual periods there are numerous examples of times when women have participated in sports during the menstrual period and have excelled only few women face pain and cramps during this during their menstrual period however it has been observed that the level of iron in the body becomes low during the menstrual period now come to the next topic under the uh, children and women in sports. This is the last topic. So here the topic is female athlete trait and osteoporosis. Under female athlete trait there are three types of there. Osteoporosis, amenorrhea and eating disorder. So come to the here first that is female athlete trait. First we have to know about the female athlete trait. This is a symptom of a group of health disorders. It includes, pro it includes problems related to osteoporosis, amenorrhea and anorexia. Trait is a serious disorder which can result in a lifetime of surfing. So, so come to the first point that is osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is also known as weakness of bones. Okay, so come to the osteoporosis. It is a bone related disorder. The bones become weak and lose their density. 
due to loss of due to loss of bone mass the bones may get destroyed now come to the causes of osteoporosis that is first is genetic cause definitely if a parents is parents is having or um, their elders is having then definitely there is a maybe there is a chances of osteoporosis to the child also lack of proteins exactly if they are not taking the if they, if they are taking the lack of protein there so then also they are getting a this chance of osteoporosis also lack of exercises definitely if you are not participating in physical exercises or physical games and sports then definitely there is a chances not chances it's a fact that is you may face the osteoporosis disease also or disorder lack of vitamin d and calcium yes exactly if you are not taking vitamin d and calcium then definitely it may cause uh, osteoporosis also diabetes thyroid if you are having a diabetes and thyroid problem also then also it may be caused as osteoporosis problem or disorder consuming too much soft drinks exactly the soft drinks and the fast food is very harmful and very harmful for us if we are, if you people if the ladies and the girls are taking lock let lock of let the maximum amount of uh, uh, soft drinks and uh, fast food then definitely there is a, maybe there is a chances of their their bones become weak and they face uh, osteoporosis disorder now come to the next is that is amenorrhea amenorrhea in this it is a disorder of menstrual periods in women in this uh, the menstrual periods of women either does not start or the period is not repeated till 3 or more months it simply means that either the absence of period or the relapse of the period continuously for 3 or more than 3 months is a property of is the property of amenorrhea now come to the causes what are the causes first cause is intensive and excessive exercises yes the we can see that the girls the girls are participating in a um, so much of uh, uh, exercises so much of they are doing the so much of exercises even uh, these are only happen <coughs> when they are doing long term running gymnastics or take it or take uh, take exercises for a much longer period time then it may be cause a amenorrhea next is hormonal changes exactly hormones play an important role in the growth of the gland and the removal of estrogen from x if estrogen functions is blocked the condition of excretion in the female is totally exaggerated now come to the next stage that is psychological effect exactly many people many people athletes suffer from psychological effects that there are many emotions like stress anxiety emotionally control over emotions which can affect hormones the result is possibility of relapse now come to the next in the last point <clears throat> under this that is eating disorder eating disorder eating disorder here most of the girls with female athlete trade try to lose their body weight as a way to improve their performance in the field of games and sports in order to lose the weight they may practice unhealthy weight control methods including restricted food intake self induced vomiting consumption of appetite suppressants and diet pills and use of laxatives so many girls deny their eating disorder due to embarrassment shame fear of losing control over the their dieting and regimen and a mistaken belief that excessive weight loss enhances sports performance <laughs> performance now come to the types there are two types of uh, eating disorder the first is anorexia nervosa in this eating this in this anorexia disorder the female athletes think only about the food dieting and body weight all the time they have destroyed body structure other individuals usually feel them that they are becoming thin but they do not believe this in front of in front of the mirror they see themselves as obese they they thinking that they are obese they are feeling obesity so they took they the they, they are doing the dieting and all so next is the second type is that is bulimia nervosa bulimia in this it is also an eating disorder in which a female athlete eats excessive amount of food and then vomits it in order not to gain weight in this disorder an individual binges on food 
and feels a loss of control then no to prevent gain tries to vomit the food so now come to the symptoms what are the symptoms of eating disorder first is always thinking about the structure and size of the body obviously next is constant fear of gaining weight if you have totally fear constant fear that you are gaining the weight then definitely it's a mean it's a disorder next is using medicines using medicine herbal products and uh, to reduce the body weight it's also a very dangerous next is exercising too much definitely if you are exercising too much definitely it will affect to our uh, eating disorder also next next is sometimes they are doing dieting and sometimes eating too much means that do they if they are doing the dieting so they should diet they should do the diet so when they are doing doing the when they are doing the dieting part so uh, they are um, skipping the meal they are skipping the meal so at the time what happened uh, they are skipping the meal suppose they are skipping the meal at the afternoon but the evening what happened they took more amount of food that will also affect the eating disorder now come to the precautions precaution of eating disorder the first precaution is keep height and weight ratio under your control and next is eat at fixed time don't skip the meal eat at fixed time and if you are doing the if you are doing the dieting also but dieting is a no doubt dieting you are doing but you took a small amount of food small amount of food but <clears throat> whenever you are doing doing uh, whenever you are doing the dieting so you took some small amount of food but should not skip the meal next is identify the problem and talk to people to find solution and next is keep mental stress un- under your control and maintain a positive attitude and last is do not overeat now come to the treatment treatment of eating disorder first is psychotherapy first is psychotherapy under this the use of talk therapy can improve the can improve the to be can uh, can prove to be helpful the next is cognitive behavioral therapy cognitive behavioral therapy it aims to improve mental health the next is interpersonal psychotherapy in this this helps in resolving problems related to communication with others and the next and the last stage under this that is dialectical behavior therapy in this this helps in dealing with stress and improving behavior it also helps in keeping emotions under check thank you students